Hey, all sitting here in the truck, heading to the property. Like I said, rain or shine, we need to make some stuff happen. So let's head on over because work's not going to get done unless I get over there and get it done. up everybody welcome back to the journey welcome back to the property as you can see it's a muddy mess had a lot of rain but it's holding up well it's doing good i can even show you the the culvert so the little catch basin even though it's small it's doing okay which because we have water that comes up from that direction we have water that comes up from that direction and then all the water that comes down from the driveway, which this still needs to be cleaned out because as you can see, it still fills up the driveway. But like, I know Gladys came through and scratched out a lot of this to kind of clean it up, which it does help. And it's it's been draining okay. The rocks are getting settled in good. I know at some point we are gonna have to come in with another layer, but Eventually, the entire driveway is going to have a layer. So, yeah. Like I said, you know, over on the Daily Scuttlebutt. And if you guys didn't know, hey, we have a side channel. It's called the Daily Scuttlebutt with IFF. If you don't know what Scuttlebutt is, that's actually a Navy term for the watering hole. The watering hole is where all the gossip happens. <laughs> so, that's that back in the, the olden days of... Whew, that was a deep hole back in the olden days of the wooden ships the scuttlebutt was basically the the drinking area is the uh was it the barrel i guess where they'd keep you know their grog or <laughs> what 
water, wine, whatever it be. But that's where people would gather around, and that's where they would talk. You know, their stories, their their shanties, their all those things like that. So, yeah, that's just a daily vlog Monday through Friday over at the Daily Scuttlebutts with IFF. And uh, I'll throw that link up in the corner so you guys can check it out. But all right, so like I said, here on the property, even though it's wet, it's soggy. I know I'm bouncing around a little bit, but I'm walking, sorry. So just real quick before I get in, so I'm not really gonna be doing a whole lot of like cutting down trees or prepping areas and stuff like that because for one, as I just showed you, it's, it's muddy as heck, but I do have a few uh, tools that I wanna get together. And I actually wanna go ahead and do a, a quick review on the Husqvarna that I bought. So stick by for that. But first off, before I do the review, let's go check out uh, some of these other waterways and or areas that we're trying to improve for water runoff or catchment or yeah, things like that. Let's go check it out. So this is the other metal culvert. And I can tell you right now from what had happened with the other culvert, how it was all completely deteriorated on the bottom, I can already guarantee you that this one is as well. Because if I get you guys in here close enough, for one, you can see it has a lot of sediment and dirt right there on the bottom. But I can also tell too, it's from the roadway, if you guys can tell, it's got like a little hump or a little dip in it, especially over on this side right here. So if you can kind of see that. And what that's telling me is that as we're driving over this, that whole thing is being pushed down. And basically it's telling me that that culvert is no longer a culvert. <laughs> and as we're driving over, it just keeps pushing that down and down and down. But those culverts are also over $200 a piece. So we're gonna have to kind of work that into the budget because whew, they're expensive. <laughs> and that's the, like the cheapest, you know, I've been able to find. I think the that 12 inch one was like 250 something dollars. So yeah, last time I showed you guys the pond, uh, well, one of the last times I showed you guys the pond, it was really, really elevated and the water was way up. So I can kind of flip you guys back around and show you. So where this water sits right here. So this is normal, basically what I've seen as being normal, right? It doesn't really get much lower than this from what I've seen. Uh, even with the really low rain, you know, whenever we like we first came to the property the the state was basically in a drought for a while for a year or two well last time you guys seen it this water was all the way up here where my finger points i couldn't even walk around this branch that sticks out because there was water up here so that's how far that it's went down because that tree that's leaning over was completely under the water and even like some of these smaller trees like this and that, you can even see I have another little, there's like a little rod holder, a little red rod holder right there. That water was all the way up here. So that, I mean, that's a good three, four feet worth of water. I can come down here, see if you guys can, because this, this edge right here, this front edge is actually really, fairly steep let me get you down here see if you can kind of see but yeah that water came all the way up to this tree so that's a pretty good drop because you can see over in this corner here is where we have the runoff so let me get up here we'll walk over there 
and this is one of the areas that I need to call around and get some estimates for a bulldozer because we need this kind of scraped this needs to get covered which I'm gonna come in here with some rocks from the pile way over there but where my truck sits there's a dip right here that needs to get filled in because all that water that comes from the the area over here comes through that culvert and then it goes back down this way to go to the creek but we want it to go this way into the pond so we're going to reroute it and then this will be the overflow to the pond and last time the water was all the way up here almost to the point of actually starting to go over to overflow so yeah that's a good four feet yep. so muddy mess let's go check out the creek Gonna have to come through here and pick up trash. <laughs> but this creek's flowing good. From what we've seen, it stays about like this normally. It does come up to here, like whenever it gets really, really bad. I've, I've seen it all the way up to here. But it has to raise quite a bit. And then, same on the other side. You can kind of see. The little little bankment here and then it starts going back up the hill oh, the frog just jumped in the water but eventually we're going to get a big bridge but this little the smaller footbridge that i'm going to do i'm probably just going to put over here it's one of the smaller areas i need to cross or even try to do here but it's it's a long distance and to be able to cover the longer distances i'm gonna need longer lumber which i don't currently have all right so that's our <laughs> muddy mess things that we're dealing with every week it seems like because we get rain about every two or three days what's crazy though it's not even the rainy season yet so uh, all right, so I'm back up here to the little shop area. So let's go ahead and jump in here. I'm going to put together the wheelbarrow. So I have a second wheel. I actually bought the conversion kit to turn a single wheel wheelbarrow into a double wheel wheelbarrow. <laughs> kind of hard to say all at once. And then I'm going to do the review. So let's get into the shop. Let's go knock out this wheelbarrow and then let's talk chainsaws. All right, so to get started on this conversion, just know that I am not sponsored with any of these things. I bought this with all of my own money, but I went and got me a Gorilla wheel. It's a 16 inch pneumatic tire. It does not exactly match the same tire I already have. So that's probably one thing you should look at. But next time I get up to the store, I'll get me another one of these so they will match. They are close, but just a little bit off. And then I also picked me up a Gorilla. It's a dual, it's a single to dual wheel a conversion kit for the wheelbarrow. And hopefully you guys can hear me okay because I forgot to bring my microphone. Uh, I always forget something, but I will speak up. So first you want to start off by getting this wheel off. And for me, it is a half inch, which these were not tight at all. One of them I actually got off by hand. So now you can take off your wheel. Axle comes right out. Now, 
I need to get the stuff off my other wheel. What did I do? I had a knife around here somewhere. All right, now that I got everything out, uh, you can actually read, you can go through, so it does have instructions. All right, you're able to do this yourself. If, if you don't need a, a video, but what it's telling you is you once you get your brackets off, so if you look at these, they actually have an offset. So whenever you uh, took these off, the single wheel, these offsets were facing in. And for the double wheel, you're turning them around and facing them out like that. All right, so if your little brackets have these little nubs in them like this you're gonna have to get that out because that that rod does not go through there like that so yeah so what I'm gonna do so I tried knocking these out I tried knocking these out with the, the old axle and it still wasn't enough, so I'm actually going to drill those out instead and see how well that works. Just like that. Now I gotta do the same thing to the other side. And there we go. So you get that to where that will go in there. You get these to where they'll line up. And then you can always tighten those down just a little bit more. This isn't really what spins so the wheel itself should be spinning on your rod not the rod spinning on the wheelbarrow so it does come with different spacers it does come with different uh, bushings for the wheel itself in case you have a different size axle <coughs> excuse me and then so go ahead and get a wheel up here which I'll put this one over here uh, you just want to look and see if you're gonna need any type of spacers So once you get it on there, you kind of want to get it equal on both sides. And from what it looks like, 
I'll be able to use a spacer, the smaller spacers on mine. So let me get you over here a little closer so you can see what I'm talking about. So put both of your wheels in and then just try to get this right here the same as this over here from where your little hole is for your that's because you have room for a washer and then a cotter pin. And then, like I said, it has the, the bigger spacer and a smaller spacer. So I know I can put that on there. And then I'm also going to have room for this on both sides. But I want to put my spacer inside. So it's actually giving me a, a little more room. All right. But you can put them wherever you want. You don't have to put it on the, the outside. Right, and there we go. And then you can either keep these for something else or throw them away. I actually had to put air in this tire, <laughs> but hey, now they actually look about the same size. Amazing. All right, so now I'm just gonna go through finishing tightening up the bolts and uh, this will be ready to work. It's gonna work just fine. <laughs> now let's get to that review on that saw. All right, this is my review of the Husqvarna 120 Mark II. This is not a paid promotion. I am not endorsed or sponsored by this company. This is just my honest review of this saw. I had the Husqvarna review. Husqvarna review. Yeah, I, <laughs> but I just wanted to jump in quick at the end of this video. I definitely appreciate you guys. If you made it this far, we would definitely appreciate you guys. Give us a thumbs up. Share us out to your friends. Help us grow. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. It does help us. We definitely appreciate it. It doesn't cost you a dime, right? But this saw, so I've had a chance to use it for quite a while now. And let me tell you that this saw is actually a beast for the small size that it really is. Now, I have not had the opportunity to get into like really big trees with it, but that's not what it's made for. It is made for a little bit smaller tree. It's more for limbing, for doing those things. And that's what I've been doing with it. So let's go check out some of the things that we've actually been doing with this saw real quick. And then I'll come back and I'll talk more on it.
And if you guys haven't had a chance to see where this tree comes down the wrong way, tree cutting fell and knocks out my phone and camera and breaks my tripod, I'll link that to the end of the, the video. You guys can go check that out. Now one th cool thing about this all, obviously whenever you do get it, or it's probably all of Husqvarna, not just this all, but if you see this right here, see this little thing right there? It'll connect to, and that's an app. So they actually have an app. It is on both the, the Apple and Android. And what's cool about it is that it actually allows you to connect to your saw if it has the capability of Bluetooth. But it also allows you to see like what type of chain that it might use. It has uh, different maintenance uh, items and stuff like that. But for this saw here, this saw is not Bluetooth capable. All right, but it does list some of the things that it can do. But you also have the different stickers on here, right? That tells you it's a 3.8 pitch. It tells you exactly what type of chain it is. It has some of the different specs. It even has little starting instructions. You know, it's for a non-professional person. This is actually a really great saw. And whenever I first got it, the oil, right, it, it seemed to leak a lot of oil. But I actually read in on that, that this saw, especially when it's new and it doesn't have any pitch, doesn't have anything on the, the chain itself, like it's going to spit out the oil. And that's crazy, but it does. And it has actually a pretty decent sized reservoir for your, your bar chain oil has a pretty good size tank so i i think it's for me i mean that one tank lasted me uh i don't know about an hour maybe don't quote me on those times but it it did get to the point to where after that very first time use it was using a lot more oil for here for the lubricating oil than it was the fuel and it just seemed like it was spilling out but that's actually normal in a brand new saw not only of this brand or this saw basically a, a lot of the the Husqvarna saws are the exact same way so now that it I've had a chance to use it it actually goes through the, a proper amount of lubrication and it, it works great. It works really great. I do enjoy this saw. Now, I hope you guys have enjoyed our journey thus far. I'm still out here trying to get it, trying to knock out some of these projects. It's super wet. It's super muddy, like you saw at the beginning of the video. But still out here, still trying to do our thing, trying to get some work done, even if it's only putting together tools and getting stuff ready for the next project. Oh, man. But, yeah, that's all. If you guys really need a, a good just home saw to, to use, even if it's not on the daily, I definitely recommend you getting you a Husqvarna 120 Mark II because... I love it. I enjoy it. I do have a bigger still. I have a still farm boss, but we'll talk about that saw on a different video. All right. So definitely appreciate y'all. Make sure you're checking all the links we have down in the description. It's greatly appreciated. You can, you can check us out on Facebook, Instagram, all those other things. And yes, we do have a bonfire store that would help us tremendously. If you go check that out, you know, it puts a little bit of money back into our pocket. So we definitely appreciate that. We definitely appreciate you all. And just remember, always thank a veteran at every chance you get, not only on Veterans Day. And we'll see you on the next one. All right, y'all. Bye-bye now.